Welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Last episode, we took down the final gym leader, which means we are now ready to take on the Pokemon League, or the final boss of Team Star. Or perhaps we should go visit Arvin. To be honest, I'm still not exactly 100% decided on what it is that we're going to be doing. So let's check out our map and do a little recap of the adventure so far. As you can see, we've got all 18 badges now collected, and the game will actually show you the order in which you completed them. I would say we, for the most part, did the quote-unquote correct order, except for, of course, the last few gym leaders, Grusha and then Tulip, who we just beat last episode. But now that we've completed all three paths, we have the final objectives. First up at the Pokemon League, we've got Nemoto waiting for us to challenge the league and claim the title of champion. In the center of Mezagoza, or rather at the school, we've got Cassiopeia, who we can challenge at the schoolyard, but apparently we have to do that at nighttime. And then all the way back where we started our journey at the Pocopath Lighthouse, we've got Arvin, who wants us to head back to the lab at the base of the lighthouse. And we will be taking on at least one of these in today's episode, but I also want to focus on exploring because there's actually a few areas that we never really got to fully explore. Starting off at the very top right of the map here, we've got the North Province Area 1, a little bit of Glaciado Mountain, and there's actually a outbreak of a Pokemon I don't know yet. And then all the way at the top left, there's this whole area to the north of Casaroya Lake that I also never explored. So we're going to check those out and do a little bit of training because my team is also not quite ready for the Pokemon League. In fact, right now they're literally half dead. But this isn't actually the final squad I'm going to be taking into the League itself. Obviously, we don't have our starter RuPaul even in there, so that's the first thing. Though I really, really love King Gambit in terms of design. We just caught it like two episodes ago. I'm definitely not going to switch it up and add him to the squad like last second. Plus, we also already have a steel type that I've been thinking about using this whole time, and that is, of course, Spinel, the Tinkaton, who's definitely going to be coming into the squad in exchange for Vegeta, the Annihilate. Wait, I could have sworn we didn't have Kiddo on the final team. Is there a Pokemon that I'm missing? Maybe in another one of these boxes? No, that's definitely not it. Oh, wait, I just remembered who my final teammate was meant to be. Samus, of course, the Armor Rouge, the Fire and Psychic type exclusive to Pokemon Scarlet which is going to be taking the place of Kiddo, the Low Kicks. I mean, I did like using Low Kicks throughout most of the playthrough, actually. We had Low Kicks on the team. Same with Phoebe. I got to give a huge shout out to this Pomot who carried us through a couple of battles. And of course, Mac and Cheese. How could I forget about the Mouse family who carried us through like half of the Titan Pokemons? Oh my gosh, I almost forgot Whoopi too, the Claude Sire. Man, we used a lot of Pokemon throughout this playthrough which I'm actually really proud of, like the fact that I got to show off so many new evolutions throughout this gameplay. But in the end, we have to decide our core team, and I think this is going to be it. So we are in fact going to be running with two Steel types, Dabloon, the Golden Go, and Spinel, the Tinkaton, with the rest of the squad being pretty balanced in physical and special attack. This is the final squad we're going to go with. So if you guys are excited for the beginning of the end, don't forget to smash that like button as we're going to begin by heading straight to the Pokemon Center because my team is not doing too hot right now. <laughs> And we're going to begin our exploration by heading to the top left as Quackaball decides to just do spins around me right now in the background. That's freaking funny. The closest spot we've got to fly to is the middle of Castle Royal Lake. So off we go to adventure. And actually a few people pointed out that apparently the Titan Pokemon do respawn after a couple of days. At this point, it has been a couple of days. So I'm really curious if maybe that's happened by now. What the heck? There's no Titan Tatsugiri here still. Man, that is so sad. I totally missed out on getting the Titan Tatsugiri and also the Titan Bombardier. I went back to check the base of the mountain. Yeah, it wasn't there either. So RIP to our potential Titan Tatsugiri and Titan Bombardier. At least we got the main one, like the new Pokemon, which was, of course, Great Tusk, the Paradox Dawn fan. And I noticed some very interesting looking bridges up here that we never really explored. It's kind of weird because I guess throughout the main story, there was really no reason to come up to this top left corner of the region. But there's something really cool up here, at least like geographically. I don't know what the heck this is, but it looks interesting. 
Oh gosh, can we actually go across this? I almost feel like I should get off Gorai Dawn and maybe this will be easier. Oh god, okay, this is very nerve-wracking. Come on, speed it up a little bit. Well, actually, it's not as hard as it looks. And we get a TM for Thunder. Heck yeah. At this point, I'm a little bit over catching new mons for the decks, though. Because the next reward that we get from Jock is at 400, which means we need to complete the whole decks, basically. So I'm probably going to save completing the decks for a future live stream. So make sure to stay tuned because I'm not sure if it's going to be on YouTube. I mean, most likely it is because Twitch has been having a whole bunch of issues recently that I'm not really that big a fan of. Oh, hello, Krogunk. Wait, is this another one of the 10 sites? Yes, Casaroya Falls. Oh, that's cool. I'm guessing that means that we have a fly spot here because all the other 10 sites of Paldea. Yep, we got Casaroya Falls. Does that mean we found all 10 of them now? Oh my gosh, this Krogunk, bro, I swear. Get out my way, move. Uh, frog? Yeah, that's definitely how the song goes. Anyway. There's also another tower over here, and a slow bro just chilling. A lot of Star Raptors, too. Which, like I said, I don't have for the decks, but at least now I know where it is. And oh my goodness! Hello, little one! Now, I wonder if there's a Pokemon League challenge around here. Like, you have to face a certain number of trainers to get a reward. Usually, they're at the Pokemon Centers or by these towers, but I haven't seen them at either location here in this area so far. But there definitely are trainers, so... Let's get to some training! Jose the student, my dude! Okay, that's actually my grandpa's name, and he's looking just as old as him, too. I'm not gonna judge, but like, is there a point where maybe it might be a little too old to at least be wearing the uniform? Like, no shame in going back to school late. But in terms of wearing the school uniform at age 60, yeah, I feel that's a little goofy. <laughs> That level up on Quixote just reminded me we actually don't have the final evolution of our little dragon just yet. And that is going to be my final teammate officially now. I mean, he's on the squad right now. But I would definitely like to have the evolution before we go take on the Pokemon League. And I believe I read a comment that said it's at level 55. So, yeah, we got a couple more trainers to go. So because today we're going to be rounding out the squad, at least in terms of training, I want to ask you guys... What was your team in Pokemon Scarlet or Violet? We can do a little Rate My Team session, which I remember were really popular back in the day. Like when Poketubing was first starting, everybody would do a Rate My Team. And I guess it was more for competitive battling, not necessarily the main playthrough. But we can do a little Rate My Team for the playthrough teams today. So drop it in the comments below and I will harshly judge you. Any of you that have more than one starter or a legendary on your final team. Even though we haven't actually been able to use our legendary, like, to battle with in this game. I didn't really think about it until now, but the story here has been so different than your average Pokemon. Like, usually when you're getting near the 8th gym, you have the climax with the evil team and you get to catch the legendary, which a lot of... Well, I don't mean to call you guys newbies, but I mean... <laughs> I personally don't like using legendaries on the playthrough team because it makes the game a little too easy. Wait, what the frick? There's a spirit tomb up here? Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> well, I could definitely catch that considering I don't have it for the decks yet. But like I said, I'm just going to save it all for a future stream or special episode as we have Sakarat Trail. So that's what this area up here is called. There's got to be something to do up here, right? Like... Some kind of objective that doesn't have to do with the Pokemon League, but maybe one of the secret legendaries, or at least a League Challenge thing. Like, I haven't seen a single trainer. I do remember before the game came out, I thought, oh my god, <laughs> speak of the devil. We got the cave right here, and what the frick? Oh, it's Lurantis. For a second, I thought that was like a Tinkaton. Yeah, uh, that's definitely to do with one of the post-game legendaries, which... Where are you going, Sudawudo? Oh my god, that run right into us. Why do they run like that, dude? They look so funny. <laughs> maybe they're scurrying away because it started raining. And of course, Sudawudo, you know, maybe don't love the rain too much. What the heck? A crack pot? I could have sworn we had that already. I think actually last time we got the chip pot. And yo, can we actually knock this fortress off the tree? Hey, that's so cool. I didn't know fortresses hung out on the trees like that. I know Pineco does because, you know, he's a Pineco, but I didn't really 
think about Fortress doing the same thing. Oh my god, come on, are you serious, dog? I was actually thinking about catching you too since you left at the perfect HP, but I guess we can't have nice things. And that's actually gonna kill Samus, great. Well, I guess now we know what the point of this area is, but I gotta say, it looks really, really cool. Maybe not so much with the rain, it's a little bit spooky. Oh, <laughs> what the heck? I just spoke the rain out of existence. Got Slacking and Raichu, neither of which I've caught yet, actually. I mean, at this point, I'm thinking about just starting to catch some of these Pokemon because catching in this game actually gives a lot of experience. More than auto-battling, at least, which I could also be doing, but... I really just want some trainers to fight, but apparently there's none around here. Finally, we have another trainer, but is there seriously not a league rep somewhere around here? Oh, hello, Golduck. Oh my goodness. You are right inside of us, aren't ya? Okay. Is this like the retirement area of the region? I'm so confused. There seem to be a lot of senior citizens hanging out. Let's show them what real battling is all about as we knock the Chansey off its feet. I love saying that for some reason, especially with RuPaul because he's literally got the fancy feet always dancing and at level 52 we'll be learning a feather dance, which is pretty good, but I'm not gonna go for. I do need to update RuPaul's moves though, like Air Slash, definitely not good for him. What the frick? Is that a Spideups on the tree? Oh my god, that is so creepy, dude. <laughs> what happens if we ram into it actually? I mean, I'm guessing the spy dogs will fall down. Huh. Wait, what the heck? Bro, I don't think that's how it was supposed to go. Oh, it's startled. That's awesome. Well, I already caught one of you way, way long ago. So, uh, don't mind if I just run right past you. And even higher up the cliffs, you got a Mabostiff in the wild. That's cool. Oh my god, another clan of them over here. Dude, seriously, why is every student out here over 50? I don't get it, like... Is it because we're in a late game area? These are supposed to be like the veterans, you know? In every other Pokemon game, when you get to the late game, there's all the veterans, but in this game, the veterans are instead senior students, I guess. Oh no, oh no! I totally forgot about Dash Bun's ability! I mean, honestly, I didn't realize that it completely negates Fire-type moves. I knew about its secondary effect, though, raising special attack. I feel freaking dumb. Ah, there's one of those stakes that we would need to open up that green gate. Or maybe a different gate. I don't know if the color corresponds Whoa. with the actual stake, but oh my gosh. Really? Mastiff, you're guarding this item with your life like that? Okay. <laughs> Somehow we managed to get it without upsetting him. And there seems to be a dragon tamer and a big nugget. Wait, that's the first big nugget we've ever gotten? Are you serious? Okay, well, you are a dragon tamer, so let's test out our Quixote in battle. He hasn't really gotten all that much action, so I'm curious if he's ready to handle this dragon lady. I mean, considering she's got a Noibat, yeah, definitely. That's four times super effective. Oh, but she's got a Haxorus too. Yeah, I don't think we can handle this dude, especially with uh, Dragon Claw being our only move. Oh, we could Terrastalize into Ice-type. I didn't realize my Arctibax was actually Terra Ice-type. That's sick, because we already have Luma, who is Terra Dragon. So I'm glad this dude is actually Ice instead. We don't have any repeats. Though, he doesn't exactly have the strongest ice attack right now. Oh my god, Swords Dance! No! He's setting up for the sweep! I really hope this Ice Fang does at least half of its HP, otherwise... I mean... Yeah, well... He's still faster than us, so... I don't know. This Outrage is probably just gonna kill us, isn't it? Oh my god! The Swords Dance boosted Outrage! Even though it's not super effective, because we turned ice, Quixote is gonna die! I'm sorry, little guy. Well, the good news is he's locked into Outrage now. Oh my god, what just happened? Hello? Are we inside of Spinel's hammer? Or inside of that wall next to us? Yeah, probably the wall. Wait, what the frick? How is Tinkaton faster than the Haxorus, but Quixote wasn't? Are you serious? Does Quixote have like a speed lowering nature or something? There's no way. As we get knockoff, I think that's better than Slam at least. I'm sure a lot of the Elite Four will have held items, so Knockoff will do more damage to them. Oh my god, another one of the 10 sites of Paldea! 
The Gracia Stones. Okay. That means there's got to be something special out there, right? Let's try this again from a little bit higher up, because I felt that maybe there would have been something up on one of these spires. Doesn't look like it. I mean, there's obviously something in the middle, but there's got to be something on these rocks back here too, right? Yep, we got a TM in this lone little island, and it's going to be helping hand, really? <laughs> this feels like there would have been something way more epic, but I guess if you're all the way out here on this little island on your own, you probably need a helping hand, to be honest, so maybe that's the inside joke. But this item's got to be special, right? Big Nugget! Oh my god! We just got our first one, and now we get another back-to-back. -back. We're gonna be freaking rich! For now, I think that's it, though, but going on those little islands reminded me that there were some islands off the coast of Porto Marinada that we couldn't quite explore all the way because we didn't have climb yet. But now that we do, we can get ourselves a TM for nothing, because the game wouldn't let me pick it up. Okay... Let's try this again. Hex! Wow, that was so worth it. <laughs> I think there's still actually even more over on this little island. We're not quite gonna make it, but this is fine. We got Klein. We'll be all right. Oh my gosh, wait, a bottle cap? Yo, first one of those we've gotten. Pretty sure in previous Pokemon games, that lets you change your Pokemon's IVs or... No, definitely IVs once you hit level 100. I know there's golden bottle caps too. To be honest, I don't remember what the difference is other than golden bottle caps are way more rare. But look at that, another big nuggy. And I think that should about do it for this area now. So let's fly back to the north and try to find some more trainers. Apparently there is a Pokemon League rep here at Castavroya Lake, but he's back near the first tower that we went. And I wonder if maybe the trainers we just battled count for this place? Okay. Seems like they don't, so we still have to find two more. And you know me, once I know that there's a reward we can get, you best believe I'm about to hunt down these last two trainers. Even here in the lake, we got senior citizens. I don't get it, is Castle Real Lake just the place where people go retire? Is this like the Florida of the Pokemon world? This lady just reminded me what we're actually lacking on our team, and that is some ground type coverage. I mean like a Pokemon with a ground move, like right now we have nothing to deal with electric types. And this Ampharos has Power Gem, okay. We have Luma who can tank electric hits for days, but she doesn't actually have anything that can counter them. Oh wait, my Luma doesn't even have the right ability, oh my god. I'm pretty sure Kilowattrell can actually have Volt Absorb, but mine got whatever the other ability is instead, so great. This episode is making me realize my team is not as ready for the Pokemon League as I expected. We'll be fine though, right guys? We can handle the Pokemon League with the power of friendship! That's always been my greatest ally. I don't mean it literally either, like I know that in recent Pokemon games they made it so friendship can randomly give you critical hits or your Pokemon can tank attacks that normally would have killed them with 1 HP. And that has happened a few times in this playthrough, but not nearly as much as it did in, like, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, for example. Which I'm glad, to be honest. Like, that feature is not my favorite. I always found it a little bit cheap. So, I would rather not win the Pokemon League this time, based off just pure luck like that. Which means, based off how we've been doing in this episode so far, we're gonna need a lot more training as we've got the greatest senior citizen of them all, Vicente, the head of the Veterans Club at the Academy. <laughs> oh my god, no! Why are we slower? Poor Luma! Dude, we are getting wrecked! Maybe it's just because I didn't heal up all the way, we probably could have tanked at least one liquidation. Oh my god, again! He's faster and with the crunch! Gimme Ghoul's gonna go down too, dude! This Barracuda is literally about to sweep through my team, dude. I mean, this is the strongest trainer in the area actually, so I feel like I shouldn't have underestimated him like I kind of am right now. I thought I could just brute force my way through. I probably should have at least made sure my Pokemon were full on HP, but you know me and forgetting to heal. <laughs> Please survive a liquidation, please survive! Oh my god! Critical hit? Really? This guy, my goodness! 
at least we finally finish it. But I'm pretty sure he still has another Pokemon. Okay, at least it's Braviary, but I don't think our Luma is actually going to be faster. I mean, we're slower than Barracuda. I don't think we're going to be faster than this freaking bird right here. Oh, thank God, dude. We're faster, but we don't even one-shot it. Are you kidding me? No, Luma, my friend. Why? Got all these Scythers in the back cheering us on. We're about to be real disappointed when we lose this. No, there's no way we're losing. Come on, Samus. You've actually been faster than almost every other Pokemon so far. So I'm guessing you'll be faster than this Braviary too. Okay, thank goodness. Finally. Is that your final Pokemon? Oh, man. That was rough. Yeah, clap for me, please. I need some freaking motivation right now. This has been rough. That's right, seven trainers down, which means we get Hydro Pump. Oh, if only... My water starter wasn't more of a physical attacker. Might actually be able to make use of that. So that whole challenge, kinda, well, I shouldn't say worthless. We did get a lot of experience, which apparently we need, considering how much we've been getting our butt kicked recently. While we're in Medali, we might as well talk to one more league rep. And I have indeed defeated five trainers here, which means we get the amulet coin. And that is actually the final item that we get from these Pokemon League reps. There might be some, a couple more around the region that I haven't finished yet, but I believe those give TMs because I'm looking at a list right now and I'm pretty sure I have every single one of the held items there. So even though in this game you don't actually need to battle trainers, I highly recommend at least doing these League challenges because the rewards are definitely worth it. Well, that pretty much wraps up everything around Casa Royal Lake and Medali. So next, I want to explore up at the top right corner, the North Province Area 1, which I apparently never even got the Pokemon Center for. So I guess we'll fly to Area 2 instead. I think that's where we evolved B-Sharp, right? Yep, we got the Bamboo Forest and the Team Star Base, which I also never explored. And there's usually at least a TM or some kind of item hidden around the Team Star bases. So let's go see what the Calf Squad might have hidden for us. This is just the episode of Bridges, apparently. There have been so many bridges so far. This one, we did actually go over before, like when we took down the Team Star base, but I feel like when you're doing the Team Star base, you don't really pay attention to what you're actually exploring. Well, you can't really explore because all the items are invisible or like, yeah, you don't really see them. Bro, what the heck? There's a freaking Terra Corviknight down here, yo! Okay, let me just make sure there's no items around and then we're definitely gonna fight this thing. Though I wonder what type it'll be. I mean, I'd have to imagine it's probably Steel? Steel still? That's a little bit weird to say, but no, it's actually fighting type! Okay! Interesting. Well, that still works out for me because I'm actually leading off with Samus, who is, in fact, Fire and Psychic. So, with a Psy Shock, not quite finish it at least i don't think yeah it didn't shatter goes for the roost so it's gonna actually heal back up which uh normally roost takes away your flying typing don't really know how that works for a terra pokemon considering it's like pure fighting right now i guess it wouldn't lo lose any of its types at all i don't think quick balls actually work on these terra pokemon since technically it's not the first turn but i don't know apparently they do <laughs> Sorry, I kind of blurted out my words there. I just got really hyped because I didn't think that Quick Ball would work out. But Corviknight has one of the best Pokedex entries in this region. As you can see here, it can't serve as a taxi service in Paldea because its natural predator, aka Tinkaton, will attack it while it flies, endangering the customer. Poor, poor Corviknight has now become an endangered species. And it's all thanks to this little shit. <laughs> Well, I don't quite know if there's a battle or Pokemon League representative in this province that we can get a reward from, but we could also use more experience, so might as well take on these trainers around here, as they're actually a lot higher level than I expected. In fact, they're higher level than my own Pokemon. That's insane. Yeah, we definitely need some more training. I don't want to end up going over 55, though, for any of my Pokemon. I feel like that would be a good bar to set, as next up, he's going to have Tauros, and it's just the plain old 
just fighting type Tauros, at least by the looks of things, which means that we're gonna get swaggered. Okay, that's great. I love leaving it all up to luck. Please, lucky duckies, be on my side for once. Of course. I feel like this would be one of the 10 sites of Paldea. I mean, look at how awesome that view was, especially with the lens flare. Oh man, this game definitely has its moments where it just looks freaking amazing. And then it has other moments where it looks not so great, but I would say overall, people are definitely a little too harsh on the graphics. And I'm talking specifically about the graphics, like performance wise, yeah, this game definitely has a lot of problems that I hope get fixed with patches in the future, but the graphics themselves, like the design of the region, I don't think are that bad. I mean, besides for a couple of textures, like those Team Star flags looking horrendous. Wait, I just realized we're at the very edge of the map. Look at our mini map right now. There's literally a grayed out or crossed out zone all the way up here. That's gotta be DLC for the future, right? I mean, the center area, the Great Crater has like the same kind of striped lines as this top right corner does. So I don't know if that's a sign that obviously this is going to be unlocked in the future, but definitely seems like there'd be something here later on. Also, according to my mini map, apparently there's Arcanines around, which I haven't seen one yet. Uh, we do have another one of those stakes though, or whatever the heck the swords in the ground are called. And a TM for Giga Impact! That's like the third or fourth one that we've gotten, bro. No joke. Why are there so many Giga Impacts? But now I'm curious, what happens if we try to go, like, up to that area? Or, I guess the cliff is probably too steep to climb? Will the game even let us climb this, actually? Doesn't look like it. So, I guess that's the edge of the world, huh? I think in the real world, this would be the Pyrenees Mountains that separate Spain from France, so could these mountains lead to Kalos? Yo, what the heck? There's a Terra Dragonite over here! Whoa! I love Dragonite! It looks so cool in this game too, it's actually freaking huge! What the heck? Alright, let's take you on, bro! I hope you're a Terra type that I can actually beat. Cause I think I'm still leading off with Samus, actually, and it is, in fact, a Steel type! Okay, that's perfect! Let's go! Or maybe it's not perfect, cause we're slower, as it goes for Dragon Dance, so at least we get- Oh my god, wait, you're level 75! What am I doing even trying to fight this thing right now? Holy moly! Uh, do I even try to run? I feel like it's probably not gonna let me. Yeah, of course. And you go for Iron Head. That's not very effective, but I'm pretty sure I'm still dead. <laughs> I didn't heal up. Oh, God. Why is it so high level, dog? No, I'm running. This is not possible. I mean, we probably could have beat it, maybe with RuPaul and the low sweep, actually, but it's too late now. I already ran away. Call me a wuss. Call me uh, other words that uh, I will not say. <laughs> Call me a coward, essentially, but I feared for my life, so there's no shame in running. Ooh, critical capture on the Chansey. That's what I like to see, even though Samus is still dead, so she's not going to get any XP. Oh my goodness, okay. Saw a little bit of something we weren't supposed to. This kindly Pokemon lays highly nutritious eggs and shares them with injured Pokemon or people. Wait, people eat Chansey's eggs? That makes a lot of sense. I don't know why I never really thought about it, but yeah, I can imagine they're pretty nutritious considering how they... Wait, what the frick? I thought you evolved at level 55. It's actually 54? Unless we already hit 55, I didn't even realize, but either way, Quixote has now become Baxcalibur. Look at this dude, or not, because the next entry covered him up. This Pokemon blasts cryogenic air out from its mouth. This air can instantly freeze even liquid hot lava. Now get out the way so I can get a better look at my dragon. Okay, I guess not. Oh wait, there we go. We can take a look as Quixote is learning Glaive Rush, which I have definitely never heard of, but I'm gonna guess it's actually a dragon type move. Okay, I was literally about to say ice, but no. The user throws its entire body into a reckless charge. Attacks from opposing Pokemon during the next turn cannot miss and inflict double damage. What? So it's like a 
dragon type giga impact but instead of having to recharge you take double damage for the next turn but you still get a chance to attack so if you're faster that means there's really no drawback wow that sounds insane i think uh quixote definitely still needs a better ice type move but then again we did get that new one from grusha the ice gym leader so maybe that's what we'll teach him that is so awesome though we've got our pseudo dragon now fully evolved ready for action look at this absolute unit barney looking ass godzilla wannabe wow that's so dope okay i'm really glad i decided to go with the pseudo legendary dragon after all i mean you can never go wrong with having at least one dragon type on your squad and speaking of here's a tm for dragon dance right in this little corner now i'm still curious obviously we can't like climb up this cliff that blocks the way but what happens if we try to go around i'm guessing there's an invisible wall or maybe not oh nope yep there definitely is we're falling oh no i should have went to that pokemon center i totally forgot whoa what the heck right at the end there it just clipped our wings and we just fell straight down but yeah i never got the pokemon center that i meant to actually fly to so i guess we're going back to the fury falls then this time i'm actually going to set the pokemon center as my destination so we can actually focus on making it there because i believe there is actually another pokemon league rep there with a prize for us which means we probably got to take on a few more of the trainers here in area one of the north province thankfully there's one right off the bat ah looks like the trainers in this area are also senior citizens which i honestly should respect more like they've actually had a pretty tough pokemon and they give good experience so i don't know why the heck i was making fun of them earlier gotta respect your elders man did i just see something inside of that tree oh my god wait there is what the frick what are you doing in there floette imagine that was a shiny what the heck wait am i did i just become the tree okay no i'm still back there but that's kind of awkward like i guess because of the position of the tree being between me and the floette <laughs> kind of looks a little weird Ooh, there's a flying type dollive raid that's definitely unique i haven't actually seen dollive at all in the wild like i'm pretty sure you can only catch smoliv and evolve it and this dude with his talent flame has just reminded me that i don't actually have anyone with rock type moves but maybe we don't need him because the aqua step definitely did enough damage we do get burned though which is kind of annoying but i think that was his last pokemon anyway yep but now we can head over there and see if that's actually where the pokemon league representative even is because i'm not really sure he might be at one of the towers or nope there he is how's it going my dude pretty sure i've only battled two trainers so far yep you gotta beat six really thankfully i remember there being at least three trainers in this lake area up here which we actually did explore last episode and oh apparently it's that way here i was ready to head up this hill I mean, I think it'll end up leading us to the same place. We just kind of have to take the long way around. But as I was saying, we did explore a little bit of this area last episode when I went to go get the TM for Hurricane. And my goodness, that moon is looking absolutely fabulous. I remember there being a set of Dragon Tamers, which would be some pretty good training for Baxcalibur. Now that he's fully evolved, we can put him to the test officially. There's also a very important looking raid den here <laughs> really it's just snow run that looks so important i don't know it seems special but i guess not anyway this is the area i like to call the three towers because there's three towers around here which i feel like might also be one of the 10 sites of paldea maybe not though but let's put quixote up first and actually now that he's fully evolved I just realized he's holding the Eviolite. That doesn't really work anymore. So let's give you the Assault Best. That sounds nice and OP. Might also notice I gave Armor Rouge the Lucky Egg so she can catch up on XP. Since this whole time we've had it on Quixote so he can evolve. But now that he did, we don't really need that anymore. So let's take on our first Dragon Tamer. Gotta say, I love Baxcalibur's Cry too. Like... Oh, is it time for the Glade Brush? Yo, what the frick? 
That animation! He literally put his back into it, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> Absolutely destroyed it, too. Wow. Well, so much for the side effects of, like, taking more damage on the next turn. I mean, if you just destroy the Pokemon in one hit, then you don't really have to face the consequences, huh? <laughs> well, that was sick. Can't wait to try it again because there's actually three Dragon Tamers around this area and they're all black text box trainers too, which I don't really know what that means. Oh, actually, she provides a little bit of context. Apparently, they're the three Dragon Sisters. Dude, I can't get over it. That's so sick. And it's gonna absolutely destroy the Dragalt too. Quixote, you absolute monster. Literally, he's a freaking kaiju. Godzilla looking dude. That's gotta be one of the best moves ever made. Like, <laughs> maybe it's just the animation that I find hilarious, but like, I've never seen a Pokemon with a signature move that unique. Yeah, there are a lot of unique signature moves, but like, one that works so well with the design of the Pokemon, like his whole thing is that he's got a sword on his back and he literally just drives it right into you. Maybe it's not as crazy as I'm making it seem, but I guess the reason why I'm so impressed is because I was genuinely confused how the frick Fax Calibur would work. Like, he's got the sword on his back. Would he actually use it at all? And my question has finally been answered. Yes, he most definitely does use the sword on his back. Literally just stabs you with it. And an attack that seems to defy all the laws of gravity, but who cares? It looks awesome. That's all that really matters. I think that's pretty much everything in this area then. Besides for the last trainer we need to finish up that league challenge, apparently this one Earl thought up sandwiches because he wanted to be able to eat while playing a hand free for games. Are you sure it was games? Or like what kind of games was this Earl playing? Because uh, I don't know why I have a feeling he might have wanted his other hand free for something else while he's also eating a sandwich. Okay, that's freaking disgusting. I don't know why I've been saying such weird things the last few episodes. Can we just cut all that out? Oh, you meant like in the world of Pokemon. He was trying to battle while also eating a sandwich. Okay, I thought she meant like in real life because that does sound like a thing a king back in the day would have done. Like, I want to eat food while I'm getting pampered by my mistresses or whatever the heck. So he invented sandwiches because they're like easy to hold in one hand while he keeps his other hand busy. Declaring orders, of course, as a king should. But I noticed there's actually another island down this way. And even though we already got all the trainers that we need, you know me, I can't help myself from exploring. So let's head down and we've got a Terra Raid Crystal for Fletchling? Ghost type? At least I think there's actually a couple more little islands all the way at the edge of the map. This better be something big. Literally, we got another big nugget. Oh my gosh. We had never gotten one until this episode and now we got like five, it feels like. And there's one more island with another glowing Terra Pokemon. Okay, definitely wasn't expecting that. Mainly because it didn't pop up until we got real close up. Oh, I think I saw it's actually an Electros, but he's got a bunch of bodyguards. The freaking... What are these called? I totally forgot. I'm actually going to auto battle them because that'll give us some good experience for Golden Go, who's actually the lowest level now on the team at 52. So you could definitely use the extra XP. So go, Golden Go. What the heck? I see a little beach over there in the corner. Huh. Is there actually something there? It looks like on the minimap, this is like the edge. Oh, okay. Good thing we came all the way out because we've actually got a rare candy and a TM for Calm Mind, as well as a lone Pomo. How did you get out here, little dude? Did you like fly on the back of a Kilowatrill? Or did you fall off the cliffs all the way up there and somehow, well, I guess he could have landed in the water. Actually, wait, Pomo can swim. So I guess he really did swim all the way out to this little island and then just decided this is my home now. Well, that should be all the trainers that we need now. So please give me my reward and tell me that it is something worth it. Please, please, it is the TM for Stone Edge. Okay, I was just saying how I need a good rock type attack on one of my Pokemon. That's pretty much 
as good as it gets when it comes to rock type attacks. So yeah, I'd say that was worth it. Well, I guess it depends if one of my Pokemon can actually learn it. So under this giant tree, we're gonna take a look through our TMs and the squad one final time as you can see the levels there. I feel like we definitely need someone with Earthquake and actually, RuPaul can learn Close Combat. Oh, hell yeah. Let's do it. Close Combat for RuPaul. The main attack we need though is Earthquake and apparently I don't have it anymore. Is it because I taught it to Claude Sire? Oh God. Well, I'm pretty sure we can make one at the TM machine. So let's check it out. And at the top, we can actually scroll by type. So let's go to ground. Got Mud Slap, Mud Shot. That is not Earthquake. Here we go. Let us make one TM for Earthquake. Bada bing, bada boom. Would you like to have one of your Pokemon learn right away? Ooh, hell yeah. Looks like one of our Pokemon can learn it, and it is actually Baxcalibur, who's got the highest attack of our whole squad, so definitely gonna teach it to him. Since this is mainly for countering electric types, and Dragon does resist electric as well, so it fits him. Oh yeah, we need to teach Terra Blast to Luma, because she terrestrializes into Dragon types, so having a Dragon move would be... Well, I mean, we have a Dragon type now, so we don't exactly need it fully. But still, I want to have at least one Pokemon with Terra Blast, and Luma feels like the right one, but do I want to get rid of Roost? I mean, I never really use it. I could also get rid of Bolt Switch. Decisions, decisions. Hmm. And finally, we have Ice Spinner, which apparently Baxcalibur can't learn. Okay, I guess we can give it to RuPaul instead of Air Slash, since obviously he's not really a special attacker. Ice Spinner does 80 damage and destroys terrain. Well, we already have an Ice type, so do we want an Ice move too? We could instead give RuPaul the Sword Stance. Yeah, that sounds much better. Now we have Aqua Step, which raises speed, and Sword Stance, which raises our attack, of course. Plus with the Mega Kick, 120 power, that sounds pretty insane. I just remember, Dubloot actually tried to learn Power Gem at one point. That's a rock type attack. And I never really use Recover, so let's grab that instead for a little bit of extra coverage. How do I have 41 rare candies? What the frick? Bro, this game just hands them out like, well, candy. I'm only gonna give Golden Go one though, so that it's like a little bit closer to the rest of the team. And I think that's about it for our training. We got three at 54, three at 55. I don't want to go too much higher, at least for this next battle. I know some people recommended level 60 for the Pokemon League, but I don't want to end up accidentally over leveled and then it's too easy. I mean, technically we'd be at the same level, but still, I would rather go in as the underdog. So that's going to be it for our training. I just realized it's turning nighttime again, so maybe we do have time for one last battle to wrap up this episode. And that is, of course, back at the Naranja Academy, where we can take on Cassiopeia, the big bad boss of Team Star. And it looks like at the gates, we've actually got Clive waiting. Sup? <laughs> Director Clavel? No, of course we know this is none other than Clive. Yup, that's my name. Don't wear it out. Actually, no. It's time for me to bring this little charade to an end. Allow me to reveal my true identity. Ha ha! Oh my god! No one saw this coming! I do apologize for deceiving you with this disguise. In truth, the boy you knew as Clive was none other than me, the director of Naranja Academy, Mr. Clavel! No way! Yes, this must be quite the shock. My disguise was perfect after all. Regardless, there is still one more astonishing truth I must reveal. The true identity of Cassiopeia, the big boss of T- Wait, what? No, that doesn't make any sense. We literally talked on the phone with Cassiopeia while Clive was there. Yeah, that's impossible. Honest to goodness. When you heard Cassiopeia over the phone, that was actually a pre-recorded- Bro, my brain freaking hurts. There is just absolutely no way I pulled it off using, uh, you know, one of those high-tech gizmos. Oh yes, it was very clever. I don't buy it, man. So, Master Orange, now you know I'm the big boss, that means there's just one thing left to do. Face me in one final showdown to decide it all. 
Seriously? Clavel was Cassiopeia? I mean, I guess that makes some sense. No, honestly, I don't get it, man. But it's really happening! Our final battle against the big boss! I am Cassiopeia of Team Star. With this battle, I'll finally bring Operation Starfall to an end! I had my suspicions that maybe it might have been Hamilton, or whatever the previous Academy Director's name was. Definitely didn't think it was Clavel. What the frick? Another twist! Cause, at least the first time I saw him dressed as Clive, I didn't even realize it was him, but... He's actually going to kick things off with an Oren Guru at level 60. I don't quite know if we are prepared for this, but we do have a Swords Dance. No, wait, this is a Psychic type, so I'm not going to stay in. Let's bring out Dubloon, who can definitely tank up Psychic hits pretty easy. And the Yawn is not going to work because of our good as gold ability. Let's go. I'm going to go straight for... Wait, did I just read? Oh my god, I forgot. Oranguru is actually a normal and psychic type, so yeah, uh, Shadow Ball doesn't affect him. I guess Dark type would be the only thing he's weak to, and Bug actually, but I don't have either of those, so I guess we just go for Steel Beam? I mean, I don't think it's gonna one-shot it, but it's our strongest attack, so we might as well. And with the recoil damage we take, oh, okay, you decided to go for Yawn again. Not sure about that decision, buddy. That means that we actually live to fight another day. And because of the Steel Beam... Well, actually, it only did about half of his HP. So if we went Flash Cannon, it probably wouldn't finish it. Which means we gotta go for another Steel Beam. But we might just take ourselves out with the recoil. No! Dubloon! You tried your best, dude. But, I mean, one for one, I guess I'll take it. But I guess because we both knocked each other out, that means that we can't actually just stay in. Let's go for Luma because I decided to actually keep the Volt Switch on her so in case this is a Pokemon that we can't deal with and indeed it is Obama Snow, which is Ice type obviously super effective against Kilowattrell. We're gonna get the heck on out of there even though the Volt Switch doesn't really do all that much damage but I think uh well I'm expecting an Ice move so let's go out to Samus even though I feel like Spinel could tank it better, like if it does go for an ice attack. And it's gonna be the Blizzard, which with the Snow Warning ability that summons the Snowscape, that means it's 100% uh, accuracy, I believe. But we tank it up, go for the Flamethrower, and a Bomb of Snow is no mo. Let's go, Sam is finally getting a dub. That's what I like to see. Looks like Clavel is sending out Gyarados up next. Now, I've been thinking about if I should actually try to stick to my challenge of using set mode, even though the game doesn't officially have it, but I'm wussing out, man. Again, I'm <laughs> I guess I'm just conflicted. Like, I feel that this is actually a bit more challenging now, especially with him being, like, quite a few levels above us, so I decided to just switch out knowing that his Pokemon coming out is Gyarados, and that is four times weak to electric moves, so yeah, Volt Switch absolutely going to destroy it but i guess i'll ask you guys for the pokemon league do you want me to try playing the game in set mode quote unquote as in like we don't switch out knowing what pokemon the enemy's gonna send out well actually we can't quite go for that strategy right now because i used volt switch and took out gyarados that means we have to switch first unless the game actually gives us the option right here oh <laughs> it actually does but i've already set sent out Quaquaval, and he's actually got a Houndoom up next, which works out for us, because obviously Water and Fighting are both good against Houndoom, but he's got a surprise Thunderfang up his sleeve. Okay, not quite gonna knock us out though, so Aqua Step is actually gonna one-shot it. Dang, was not expecting it to do that much, but okay. That also gives us the Speed Rays, of course, so no matter what Pokemon's coming out next, we can definitely outspeed it. And it is going to be a Poltegeist, which I'm pretty sure we would have outsped anyway. Uh, we can't close combat it, though, because it's a ghost type. But we can go for another Aqua Step. And this time with an extra added twist of Terrastalizing. That's right. It had to be Quackaball. It had to be our starter, RuPaul, that gets the Terrastalizing for this final battle. Or the first of the final battle. There's going to be a lot of final battles in this game, I feel. Up against the Pokemon League next. And 
I feel like there's probably still a battle maybe against Arvin. I'm not really sure what's going on with the Arvin story, to be honest. But regardless, let me know what you guys think. Should I do the quote-unquote set mode where I don't switch my Pokemon in between the enemy? You know, the little text pops up like, he's sending out X Pokemon, would you like to switch? Basically, I would just press the B button every time and stay in with my current Pokemon, kind of like competitive or online battling. Let me know down below uh, which one you would rather see as Poltegeist with the Sucker Punch and also the Will-O-Wisp, which does cut our attack staff, but I mean, it's at like 2 HP, so yeah, with one more Aqua Step, we will absolutely destroy it. I could have actually gone for a Sword Stance to counteract that Will-O-Wisp, but I don't think it's really worth it. I mean, he's only got like one more Pokemon left, I believe, and it is going to be Meowskarada! Oh my god, I predicted it! To think that I, Cassiopeia, would be backed into a corner like this. Yes, at the very beginning of the game, there was a little bit of foreshadowing that he would actually have the last starter Pokemon. And unfortunately for this Miascarada, well, it seems I shall have to Terrestrialize too. Oh no! I went for close combat, which of course would have been super effective against a Grass and Dark type like Miascarada. But he is going to Terrestrialize, I'm assuming, into Grass type which means that close combat is going to be neutral. And since we got Will-O-Wisp, I highly doubt that we're going to one-shot it. But here we go! Oda, 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 oda! Does about half of its health, so yeah, I'm pretty sure RuPaul is going to go down. Do take a step back, please. This may get dangerous. Oh my god, Clavel! What are you going to do to me? The flower trick! Oh no! RuPaul! You were the chosen one! But, I mean, you did take out, like, three of his Pokemon, so... I would say RuPaul definitely job well done as he shatters and falls. Wait, did he have four? Or, sorry, five or six Pokemon? I didn't really count, but... You know what? We haven't got a chance to use Quixote all that much yet, and we did just evolve in this episode, so let's wrap up this battle with my new favorite attack of all... Okay, that was a little scary, uh... Play Rough doesn't quite finish us, but the Glaive Rush definitely will finish off Miascarada. As I did notice, he did actually have a full team of six. Thank goodness, the final battle, at least the first one, delivers in terms of action. The climax we deserve as Clavel or Cassiopeia goes down. How strong you have grown. That was so cool though. He actually had the little Sprigatito from the very beginning of the game. Well now, Master Orange, it seems you've grown quite splendidly over the course of your treasure hunt. And here, once again, I must apologize. I am not actually Cassiopeia. Oh my god! Really? The double twist? Though Clive and myself being the same person was no lie, mind you. Cassiopeia's true identity remains hidden, but I believe I can hazard a guess as to who they may be. That's why I sought to spare you from having to confront them in battle. Their sorrows should not be yours to bear. However, Cassiopeia has settled on a course of action and is determined to see it through. I do not imagine any ordinary student could hope to stand against them and win. So I challenge you to a battle to test your skill. If you had lost, it would have fallen to me to bring down Cassiopeia. Such was my resolve. But it turns out you are as strong as you are kind. If anyone has a chance at saving that poor child, it is surely you. Wait, he basically just spoiled it. He said that poor child. It has to be petty now. As an educator, it shames me to burden one of my students with such a task. But please defeat Cassiopeia. Take on the big boss of Team Star and win. Yes, sir. Another senior citizen we gotta pay respects to. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I leave this in your hands. You there! What do you think you're doing? Wait, no. This can't be Cassiopeia, right? Miss Time, pleasure to see you. It's no pleasure at all, Clavel. I come here to investigate reports of an illicit battle on school grounds, and what do I find? The director of the academy himself facing off against one of our students, no less. Damn! What were you thinking? Uh, no. If I could just explain. You see, it is a rather sad tale. Oh, spare me. Your excuses reek worse than a stunky's behind. A stunky's behind? Oh my god. 
<laughs> this is amazing. Remember, the big boss asked us to meet them in the schoolyard after dark. I'm counting on you, Master Orange. You'll write a letter of apology to the students and faculty at once, and I'll be reporting this to the chairwoman of the school board, make no mistake. Good gracious, no! Anything but that, please! What an awesome ending. Miss Time comes in right on time to expose Clavel for the fraud he truly is. Not only did he lie about being Cassiopeia, but also, yeah, he totally broke the rules of the school, which means we should be able to wear whatever the heck we want now, right? No more uniform for the rest of the school year. If only. But that is actually now going to be the end of the episode. What an absolute banger. We got our final squad ready. We took down not the boss of Team Star, but I feel like with that battle, I'm a lot more confident now. We can, in fact, take down the real boss and the Pokemon League. So let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see up next. And don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed, as I will catch you all in the next episode.